Hey there, John Morris here, johnmorrisonline.com. Welcome back to another episode. This one, we're going to get into how to start a career in web development. So my goal for this episode is for you to know how to start, grow, and build your own successful web development career. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive right in. So the first thing before we actually start and talk about that is actually making the decision whether this is something you want to do, you should do, etc. So should you, can you, why would you, I want to go through that. So you shouldn't if you're just doing it because someone told you it was a good career or a good job. I don't think that that's, especially given how much effort it requires and how much work goes into it and how much you have to constantly be learning and so forth. I don't think that if you're only getting into it because someone told you it was a good career that you're going to have the persistence to ultimately be able to be successful and be as successful as you want. You are, you will probably be more successful in something else that fits better with your natural talents, your natural things that you value, your natural passions and so forth. So if you're just doing it because someone told you it was a good job or a good career, I don't, I don't think that you should. And I don't know that a lot of people will tell you that, but I'm going to just sort of tell you straight up uh, that that's what I think. Uh, the next thing is, is you shouldn't do it if you're really not interested or fascinated by technology. I mean, this is a tech, this is a technology field. You really have to be into it. And if you're one of those people that doesn't really care, doesn't get into the latest gadgets or get into the latest things as they come out, uh, and you sort of just deal with technology as you have to, but you've been told it was a good career. And, uh, so you decided to get into it. If that's you, then this may not be, uh, again, the best career for you because a lot of being successful in, in web development or any technology career is curiosity, curiosity about what's coming out, what's coming, what's new. And that's sort of the underpinning of this idea of always be learning, which is crucial to be successful in this uh, industry. So if you're not really interested or fascinated by technology, then I don't know if this is necessarily the right career for you. That's something to definitely think about. Finally, you shouldn't do it if you either can't or won't uh, embrace the idea that you'll always be learning, you'll always be growing, and you'll always be pushing yourself. That's just a requirement in this industry, really any tech industry, because things move so fast, you have to constantly sort of keep on your toes and keep up with it. So uh, if you're not willing to embrace that, then this might not be the, the best industry for you. So those are some reasons why you shouldn't do it. Now, if you can honestly say that you qualify for all of those things, meaning, you know, you're not just doing it because it, uh, someone told you it's a good career, you're doing it because you really want to and you are interested in technology and you do sort of embrace the challenge of always be learning and so forth and you're passionate about this sort of thing. If you honestly can say all of those things, then in my opinion, you can do it because this career is more about persistence and passion than it really is about things like intelligence, which a lot of people tend to think, oh, you have to be really smart to be uh, a developer. Sure, intelligence helps in anything, but in, in my experience, I've seen really intelligent people and really intelligent developers who don't do very well because they're not that passionate about it, because they don't haven't learned work ethic, they haven't learned persistence and so forth. So in my mind, that's much more important than uh, intelligence. So again, if you if you really want to do this and you're really passionate about it, you're really into it, then I think those are the key ingredients in whether or not uh, you can. Now, just to go quickly through some of the main benefits of why you might want to do this. Uh, the first one for me is that the opportunities and the different paths you can take are virtually endless. You can do and be almost anything you want to be because there's so many different industries, so many different niches, so many different things that you can get into uh, in this industry that uh, you can really take whatever route you want to take. And the, the kinds of things that are being built, the technology that's uh, out there that you can get into, it's it really is incredible and, and it's constantly moving forward. So the opportunities are, are endless. I don't, I think that's just going to continue to be the case and actually get even more opportunities in the, in the future. Another big one for me is you can work from, you know, you can work from anywhere either because anywhere you might move is probably going to have a bunch of technology jobs or you can work remote. So that, that was a big thing for me. You know, you get a, it's going to sound a little cliche, but you sort of get to be a part of building the future uh, because, you know, technology is what is shaping 
the the world right now and is probably going to be this, what does for the foreseeable future. So you get to be a part of that. You get to help uh, play a role in that and help build uh, part of that future. So if that's something that's exciting to you that you want to be a part of, uh, then this is a good industry to be in. Of course, the money is good. And, you know, again, another thing for me that's a little bit cliche, but is you get to do something that you love. Again, if you're passionate about it, you 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 really want to be in this, you're fascinated by technology, etc. You probably find that you really enjoy it. There will be frustrations, of course, but you get to do something that you love, uh, which is really great. So that's sort of answering the question of should you, can you, why would you, etc. to give you an idea of of should I even get into this? Should I even start? So now let's assume that you've made the decision that yes, you know, I fit all of that stuff. I know all that stuff. Now I want to actually get into this. So what do I need to start and and build my career and build a successful career? So I think a lot of people, one of the biggest mistakes people make when they get into any technology field is they start thinking about the technologies first. And it, it makes sense. That, that's sort of the natural course. But I actually think you ought to take a step back and think about your career path first. And so you just want to sort of start with the end in mind and you want to think about where you're trying to get. Okay. And I think there are three big things for you to think about right off the bat. The first is do you are you someone who is more inclined to want to go into a job? Are you someone who more inclined to want to freelance or you have more of that inventor mindset and you want to build applications and build software and so forth? I think that is probably the biggest decision that you'll make uh, in your career because these three things are very, very different career paths. They take a very different set of skills, uh, intangible skills, and they're they're very going to very heavily affect the languages, the technologies and things that that you're you're going to to have to learn in order to be successful in these. So understanding what really fits you best and choosing the right path here, I think is very, very, very important and should be the thing you do before you really start uh, thinking about technology. So just to give you a little bit of my own experience with it. So if you're someone whose main concern is sort of security and stability and you sort of think of this as a job uh, or a, a career, then you know, the job route is probably the route that you want to go, getting hired at a company, uh, that sort of thing. If you're someone who, and this is sort of where I am, you're really not so concerned about stability and, and security and that sort of thing. You more want freedom. And I think probably more for me is I want control of the situation. Like whatever I get, I want it to be because I got it, not because I worked for some company or whatever. Now I get that's not what everybody values, but that happens to be me. So if that kind of thing, freedom and control are your number one concerns, then freelancing is probably going to fit you a little bit better. And then the final thing, if you know, autonomy. So being able to not have being tied to a boss or, or a job, not being tied even to clients like you are when you freelance and so forth. If you want complete autonomy to be able to go and do what you want to do on a daily basis, and you really are uh, sort of buy into this idea or, or are inspired or motivated by this idea of building the future of, of what's going to, our world is going to look like, then I, I, I used to call this app maker, but I'm going to call this inventor because or inventor because that's really what what you are. I think that's the route for you is building software, building applications, building whatever, whatever. We don't know what it's going to be, right? That's if that kind of thing excites you. I think that's more the route to go. So again, I really want to encourage you to really think about this. You can switch at any time, of course, right? And you could dabble whatever, but. Really right now in your life, what what seems to be the best fit for me, what I want to do for the next, you know, five, ten years. And I think if you can just get this one thing right, you can be in a lot better shape uh uh getting your career started because you know, if you try to freelance and really you're you're more uh built or for, for a job or, or whatever, it's gonna be a really rough time or and vice versa. So Picking this is is really, really important. I really encourage you to take some time and think about this. All right, once you've done that, then that is going to determine the next thing, which is your technology stack. Because 
in my experience, certain technology stacks are better suited for certain career paths. So for example, something like PHP and WordPress, they tend to be a lot bigger in the freelance space, but they're not as big when you get in, start talking about standard uh, tech jobs and you maybe don't see many, uh, as many people inventing things with them as now that the, that thing sort of tends to be happening a lot in the app space, uh, Android apps and iPhone apps and so forth. So again, your career, your career path that you just picked is going to have a big effect on your ultimate technology stack. So, uh, just to sort of go through this, if you're looking for sort of more of the tech job, then I'll use the catchphrase that a lot of people like to use is the word modern, although modern doesn't necessarily mean better. Mm. That's a, that's a rant for another day, but things like Python, although that's not modern, uh, node go, those sorts of things, all of the, the kind of, uh, fancy uh, or, or new or kind of popular trendy I guess is the word that I'm looking for those sorts of languages are probably the ones that you're going to find in some of these these tech companies because they sort of tend to push the envelope uh, in that regard so that's going to affect if you want to go that route those are probably the languages that you're going to want to learn if you want to go the freelance route I would uh, I use the, the the word more established and so things like HTML, CSS, you know, jQuery, again, speaking specifically about web development, uh, PHP, MySQL, WordPress, you know, WordPress is sort of pretty big in the freelance space. P PHP is still pretty big in the freelance space. Um, JavaScript outside of Node and, and the, the frameworks is still uh, pretty big uh, in the freelance space. So those are more the languages you're going to want to go if you if you want to do freelancing uh, because that's just what a lot of people are looking for. And it's not like there's no technology companies looking for PHP developers and there's no freelance or clients that are looking for Go or, or uh, Node or Python. But generally speaking, you're going to find more of these things, more opportunity uh, with these these technology stacks in these specific spaces. Now, if you're in the inventor category and you want to build things, I mean, I, I would say that Android and iPhone apps tend to be, I think, where a lot of that stuff is happening or, or phone apps or, or that sort of thing of tablets and that. But ultimately, you get to choose. So it depends what you're building. So you kind of get to dictate that a little bit more and you have a little bit more freedom with that because it really comes down to what you're building and what you're comfortable with and what you want to use. And I would just say the big thing here is don't get locked into, well, I have to use this because I read some medium post or some Twitter tweet about how you're, if you're building your thing on this and you're a complete noob or what, don't fall for that sort of thing <laughs> because uh, it, it, it really ultimately comes down to what you're comfortable with and what you want to use. So that's the whole point of you going this route is the autonomy. Now, just as an aside here, if you do think you want to go more the freelance established path, then that's what my curriculum is oriented towards because that's sort of what I did. So I have classes that cover HTML, CSS, JavaScript, jQuery, PHP, MySQL, freelancing, uh, getting clients on Upwork, all of that. That's really what my curriculum is because it's the route I took. It's the route I teach. So uh, again, if you want to go that that sort of path, then I think that curriculum is is going to do a good job of helping you get down that uh, get down that road. In any case, you can get access to my entire curriculum for nothing over on Skillshare. Just go to johnmorrisonline.com slash Skillshare and you can get all the details on how to do that, all the links you need in order to get the, the no cost access. So again, johnmorrisonline.com slash Skillshare. All right, then the, the last thing here then that I want to cover with this is something that maybe is going to sound a little weird, but it's your exit strategy. So we've talked about your career path. We've talked about your technologies. Once you get your career path nailed and you get your technologies laid out, now you can just start learning that that stuff and start pursuing uh, that path. And, and that's sort of gonna get you started. But I think a big part of starting is also knowing how you're going to end. I saw this quote <laughs> over on Twitter the other day and I'm it's random Twitter guy because I can't remember who it was. But he said, a real hustler knows they can't hustle forever. Like, you need to plan your life outside your career just as diligently as you do your life inside your career. And I will just use myself as an example. So I've always had this desire to give my kids a better start in life than, than I got. You know, I've, I've talked about my childhood in the past. It was pretty rough. I had a 
you know, pretty bad start and had had to overcome a lot of things. And so one of my big desires was not uh, my kids not having to go through that. And a few years back, I finally got serious about it. My wife and I sold our house. We moved down by where my parents uh, live. They had about three and a half acres that they were buying on a contract for deed and they were getting close to paying off. So we helped them pay it off. And now we're just about done (laughs) building a house on sort of one side of the property. And that's sort of our home base, right? That and and where we're gonna start what is ultimately my exit strategy. But my end goal with all this is to once we have ourselves established here, buy a bunch of land around this area, and I want to move. You know, I've got one brother that wants to come down. If others want to come down, I have five brothers total. So I want to move down as many of my brothers and their families. Uh, that want to come down. I want to build houses for all of my kids and all my brother's kids. Uh, I want, and I want to give them sort of a home base at age 18 so that they have a better start than I did. So they have the freedom to figure out what they want to do in life and pursue big goals and dreams and not get caught just paying the monthly rent thing like I did. So that is my exit strategy. And the thing about that when it comes to starting is that is what motivates me to grind day in and day out. So as I was up late at night struggling with some problem or trying to learn something that was difficult for me to learn, this is what kept me motivated. This is what kept me going. And when I had decisions that I had to make about my career that I wasn't sure about, understanding my exit strategy and where I was trying to get helped me to make those decisions. A a big part of why I chose freelancing is because, again, going back to this idea of wanting to give my kids as uh, of much of a head start as I could. I want to be able to one day maybe hand down my business to them. I can't hand down a, a job to them. So again, that was a part, a big part of the reason why I got in into freelancing. So the point I'm trying to make here is that when you're at the beginning, you have a lot of decisions that you have to make. You have a lot of grinding and work that you have to put in and The way that you make those decisions, the way you stay motivated is by understanding the end goal, where you're trying to get your long-term sort of vision. You need to have a long-term vision for how your overall career fits into the grand scheme of your life. And again, that's one of those things that a lot of people will be like, what is, you know, web development, whatever. I'm telling you as sure as I'm sitting here that... Uh, you're going to you're going to find these moments where you feel unmotivated, where you feel unsure, you don't know what decisions to make. And I want to give you the answer. And the answer is that the more you think about your end goal, the more you think about your exit strategy and then get clear on that, those answers are going to get easier. That motivation is going to come a little bit easier. You're going to feel a little bit more inspired and you're going to be able to do actually do the things and make the decisions that you need to make in order to have a successful career, which is really just a stepping stone for having a successful, happy life. Okay. So I know that right now there's a pretty good chance that that's something that you, you know, you might ignore, but I just want you to remember this when you, when you come upon those moments and you, and you, you run into them, come back to this and and then really dig into this. All right, so that's it. That's sort of the best advice that I've got for you when it comes to starting your web development career. Now, of course, if you uh, got something on this episode, I'd appreciate if you'd support the show. You can do so over on Patreon. Just go to johnmorrisonline.com slash Patreon to see all the perks you're going to get access to. So you'll get access to all my officially released courses, uh, unreleased courses, uh, videos, tutorials. It's sort of just my brain dump where I kind of put everything. So if you want access to that, uh, you can go to johnmorrisonline.com slash Patreon to learn all about that. Otherwise, all my official courses, uh, officially released courses, you can find over on Skillshare. Uh, just go to johnmorrisonline.com slash Skillshare. The, the uh, benefit there is you not only get access to all my courses, but you get access to 21,000 other courses and you can get access to all of it Again, for nothing when you go to johnmorrisonline.com slash Skillshare. All the details on what you get and how to do that and so forth are there. All right, that'll do it. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you next time.